Good afternoon, good afternoon, 40 days and 40 nights. Hello, saints of God, how are you? Hello, how are you? Today, we will be talking about the um, seven churches. And we're um, in the book of Revelations, chapter 2. So, as everyone knows, we are praying and fasting for the next 40 days and 40 nights. Um, everyone try to eat as properly as possible. Um, Thursday, we're doing a three-day fast, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, um, with just water and liquids. Um, if anyone need to drink, um, natural juices, that's fine as well. But just a disclosure, this is only if you're healthy enough. If you're not healthy enough, you have to take your... Um, vital, you have to take um, medis, medication or anything like that, then I need you to follow your doctor's orders. Um, anyone who does it, do it under your doctor's orders and doctor's care. Okay, but throughout the, the time we are fasting from too much television, um, I suggest maybe just an hour of television, an hour of um, radio, or if you're playing music, um, worship music, and reading God's Word. Okay. So, we're reading the book of Revelations, and before that, I, I, I will pray first. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've done. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that your will, that you take over, Lord God, take over this um, this time of learning, Lord God, and hearing from your word. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Lord God, may every person be touched. May their soul be touched. May their heart be touched. And may we all come out changed and stronger in you and prepared for the glory of God's coming. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay. So, in Revelation chapter 2, it says, And to the angel, and I'm reading the King James, I really love the New King James Version. Let me, I read King James, but also the New King James, so we can take out the these and thou's. Um, let me get to New King James Version. Okay. Okay, to the angel of the church of Ephesus. Um, these are the things he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your work, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say that they're apostles, and they're not and have found them liars and you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my namesake and have not become weary nevertheless I have this against you that you left your first love remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the first works or else I come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from this place. Unless you repent, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nic Nicolaitans, which I also hate, Nicolaitans. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, of the, the Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes, I will, I will give to eat the fruit of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. These are the people that are actually living right before the Lord. And he's saying that they're not weary but they're still not doing the first works. Saints of God, the Lord is saying, 
Go back to your first love. Remember when we first got saved, how we were thrilled and excited. The first words, we were on fire for God. And he's not saying that people have fallen away. He's saying the first words, when you probably stayed up at night before his face. I mean, I remember staying every night reading God's word. I was excited about the things of God. I was in church as much as possible. Probably a little too much. I was in church so much that my family was joking around and saying, the church is my actual home and my home is like a second house. It was like my vacation house. That's how much I loved going to the house of the Lord. So he's saying, let's go back to our first works. Let's go back to our first love. It's almost like if you're in a relationship and you're in marriage and you're like, well, my marriage is fine, but I remember the days when we used to go out dancing, when we used to go out to restaurants and eat, and now everything is just routine. The Lord wants us to, you know, not just be in this out of routine yet. Yeah, we get used to it and we know what to do. We know what to say, and it's not that our hearts aren't right, but we're not doing it. You know, it's a different labor of love when you're going back to your first love. Like, when you first love someone, how you do everything, you're, you're making sure everything, your hair is combed perfect, you know, men making sure they're groomed perfect. And then, you know, some, sometimes afterwards, you know, people get pretty relaxed and everything. So, the Lord wants us to return back. You know, love him with that same vigor and tenacity. And, and um, even the things of God that we used to do. We used to go pass out tracts. I don't even know if anyone does that anymore. <laughs> you know, but I used to pass out tracts. And, and when my children, you know, when they were just little toddlers and, and young ones, I used to have them out with me and we would pass out tracts together and talk about Jesus to other people. God wants us to return to those first words, saints of God. And, and the, the, those are the ones who are doing well, pretty well. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now the persecuted church. And the angel of the church of Samarna, he writes, These things said the first and last, who was dead and came to life. Now, I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and that you may have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Saints of God, there are some people in the body of Christ who are persecuted. And I believe that was talking about that time, but it's still, you know, sometimes the Bible and the way God's word works is for that time, but it's also for this time. And so, that's to say, there are people all over the world and in different parts of the world who the church is persecuted. People are persecuted for loving God. Even in our country, the United States, although it's been free for years for everyone to, to safely practice um, loving God, it's become something else. The enemy has, because so many people hate the voice of God, they're making God and the voice of God evil versus all these other things and worshiping all these other gods and doing everything that's 
that's of the world, the flesh, and the devil. So God wants us to hold on. If you're persecuted, you know, some of us, persecution may seem like the enemy using some people in the church while we're uh, attending church and they're attacking us. That's persecution. But some of these people, they're actually to the death being tortured and tormented. We may have emotional hurts and pains and, and offenses, but they are dealing with physical hurt, pain, tortures. So we pray for those people. As a matter of fact, I lift those people up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, all the persecuted saints, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you strengthen them, that you strengthen their minds, that you strengthen their bodies, that they hold on, Lord God, to you for dear life. Hallelujah, Father. The enemy want them to give up. The enemy want them to cave in. And the enemy want them to renounce you. Just like Job's wife. The enemy wants them to curse you and die. But Lord God, let it not be so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The enemy want them to lose their life. Hallelujah, on the brink, hallelujah, of their pain and in the midst of their pain. Hallelujah. But we cancel those assignments right now in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall, hallelujah, be able to be strong and hold on, hallelujah, until the very end. Hallelujah. And as the Lord has promised, hallelujah, the second death, hallelujah, they will, it will not touch them. It will, they will not hurt. Hallelujah. They will not suffer. Hallelujah. Eternal damnation. We thank you, Lord God, for their lives, for their bravery, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord Father, for strengthening them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord God, and those who are persecuted, we ask that you strengthen their minds, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Strengthen their minds that they still have the armor of God, that they don't believe the lies of the enemy, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That they will not falter. Hallelujah. That they will endure as good soldiers in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. The, the Lord um, wants to um, speak about the compromising church. Hallelujah. And, and verses 12. Hallelujah. And it says, And the angel of the church of Pergamos writes, These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. <coughs> I know your works and where you dwell. Oh, excuse me. Gives me thanks. <coughs> oh, this medication. By his stripes, my throat is healed. Right now, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> now, the compromising church. These things he says. Has he who has the two, the sharp two-edged sword? I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, and did not deny my faith, even in the days which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells but I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balaam to push a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sanctified to idols and sacrifice to idols and to commit sexual immorality Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolonians or Nicolanians, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. 
He said they hold on to the doctrines of Balaam. And Balaam taught Balak to be a stumbling block among the children of Israel. And to eat things sacrificing to idols. And to commit sexual immorality. Saints of God. There are many of us in this day who are the compromising church. We're compromising in the church our morals. We're compromising God's word. We're looking like the world. We're, I, I, I can, I won't say names, but I can, I know countless of pastors and leaders that I've seen who, the way I want to say it is, they uphold each other and they uphold and they defend the people who are compromising. And it's more than, you know, we all know people make mistakes, but this isn't even about people making mistakes. This is people, this is a lifestyle. A lifestyle of compromising, a lifestyle of living the way they want. And they constantly say, I, nobody's perfect. You're not perfect. I'm sure you make mistakes. Everyone always say that. Instead of taking responsibility and being open and honest about who they are. The compromising church. The Lord does not want us to compromise those. Hallelujah. He's saying what, what's against you is the, the doctrine of Balaam. Okay. There are many people who are, who are just... And there's there, a lot of people in the body of Christ. They're stumbling blocks to each other. They hold each other back. They don't want to see another person get ahead. Sometimes it's like crabs in a barrel type of type of mentality. No one wants to see the other achieve or, or grow in the spirit because they want to be the only one with the power. And it's not even about that sense of God. We're actually on the same team. We're not competing with one another. But in the body of Christ, that's how it's been. It's been a lot of competing and God is no more of that no more of that we don't have time for that those are fleshly acts no one should be um, a stumbling block to their brothers and sisters in Christ we're all in this together and then he said we eat the things sacrificed to idols and uh, that's still the compromising um, you know, we could talk about somebody physically eating something um, that's sacrificed to idols, but even people um, compromising with um, palm reading or um, reading the, the horoscopes or having crystals and saying these crystals will heal us and things like that. These are things that are, this is idolatry. These are idols. And, and even committing sexual immorality. Um, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But we'll go on and on because then we'll be going into the corrupt church. The Lord says to repent from compromising. We are not to be compromising saints of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're... God told us not to conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the way that we renew our mind is with God's word, with his holy scriptures, with spending time with him and praying before him, with submitting our will to his will, because the flesh wants what the flesh wants. And so we have to every day die to the flesh and say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to repent or else he will come and he will fight against us with the sword of his mouth. You know, the Lord will deal with each and every one of us. We need to be prepared for his coming. This is, you know, our subject is about being prepared for God's coming. And in being prepared for God's coming, we need to hear what God is actually saying to the entire body of Christ. Whether it was a, a million years ago or even today, 
God's word is the same yesterday, day, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Now, the corrupt church and the angel of the, the church of Thessalonica write, These things said the Son of God, who has eyes like flame, like a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know your works, love, se um, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. So he told one church to go to your first love, but this church is actually growing. In their works and in their first love for him they're doing more he said nevertheless I have a few things against you because you allow the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols Jezebel don't always have to be a woman. There are men in the body of Christ who they teach, they call themselves prophets, they teach and they seduce God's people into committing sexual immorality. There are men and women in leadership ministers in leadership who are sleeping with the members who are sleeping with each other who are going and traveling to different states with their prophetess um, people they're traveling and then they're in hotels doing what they know God told them not to do sexual immorality while they having wives and, and, and husbands at home God has that that's God is not okay with that. And they're teaching the body of Christ after they commit these sins. And the people of God defend them because they're the leaders and God says, Touch not thy anointed. But God did not say we cannot speak against those things. We are to speak against those things. We are to speak up. Because that's not the church that God has for us. Just because a person is a leader, it, I think we're responsible for who we are under as well. Because we all know these spirits jump off. God is saying, you're, you're seducing your ser the servants into sin. And then they're not repenting. They're not repenting. They, they're doing it over and over again. It's a lifestyle. They, they think that they're like these superstars. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. Just that right there, saints of God. How many pastors and leaders have you heard who have passed away from some sickness or disease or um, a, a jealous husband or wife has shot them? I mean, like, I've heard some crazy stories. I've seen some crazy things. Um, because they're not being obedient to God. They're they're using God's name and, and acting in the flesh like this isn't a joke and this isn't even about talking about pastors and, and, and preachers and leaders and, and things like that because yes we all fall sin and sh falling short of the glory of God but it's a lot of men and women out there in positions who are wicked and they need to repent because God is coming this is not a joke but this isn't to say that there aren't, it's just like in, anything. There's always a rotten apple that will spoil a bunch. It doesn't mean that all pastors, all ministers, all prophets and apostles are wicked. But we are speaking to those who are. We are addressing those things. And the Lord said that they are to repent. He said he will cast them into a sick bed. And those who commit adultery with 
these people into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. And repenting is more than God, I'm sorry. It's turning away from and saying, you know what, I'm not going to live like this no more. This is foul living. You got to literally like get be sick of it. And know that it is wrong. I will kill her children. A lot of those people don't prosper. I have seen someone who slept with multiple women and lost their entire church. Like God is not playing. Some people, they may have had a, a great congregation and they lasted all the way until they did pass away. Sometimes God allows that because there are baby Christians that he don't want to be uprooted and to just give up altogether. Unfortunately, in this life, we're going to see all kinds of things within the church and without the church. Inside the church and outside of the church. And we still have to hold on to Jesus and know him for ourselves. We have to have our own relationship with God. Because if our leaders fail, if we see any of them um, deciding they're no longer going to live holy or they, they, they stop living holy or they start compromising or even just straight up corrupt, um, we have to know Jesus for ourselves and hold on to God's, to God's unchanging hand. We have to live a, um, um, a consecrated life before the Lord for ourselves. And teach it to our families. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he said, I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. God knows the minds and the hearts of people. And people get angry when God's prophets, when God is talking to their prophets about the things that's in people's hearts. And I give to each one according to your works. God is not a man that, God is not a man that he should be mocked, saints of God. It's time for people to repent. And if it's a leader listening, whomever's listening, if, even if it's your ministers, your pastors, pray for them, yes. But we're living in the days that nobody, these people who've been playing around for years, they're either going to go to one side or the other, but they need to figure it out because the Lord is here. We need to be prepared for God's coming. We don't have time to even be concerned about if, if our pastors aren't getting it right anymore. We can't even be concerned because some people, oh, well, the pastor's not living right. And then people just give up altogether. No, don't give up your walk and your relationship with God. You just have to hold on to God and change your hand. And we have to get to the point where we don't even look at what everyone else is doing. Because a lot of people are living corrupt with inside of the church. But God will deal with everyone according to his works. So it's not even up for us to try to change it around but I will address it because it's time to repent because God is coming the, we're living in a days God is coming it, it's not going to be long saints of God and I suggest and this is just my suggestion we need to be living as if God is coming today this isn't a time to be playing games. We need to live as if God is coming today. We need to live as if it's an urgency. We need to live with a purpose. Hallelujah. To be committed, fully committed to our Heavenly Father. No one can straddle the fence right now. No one should be compromising right now. And no one should be living corrupt right now. We have to constantly clean ourselves with the watering of His Word with the Holy Spirit, walking by the Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I say to the rest of Thessaria, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put, I will put on you no more burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like a potter's vessel. 
and I also have received from my father and I will give him the morning star he who has an ear let him hear Jesus Jesus I think that's one, two, three, four churches. Let's go on. And um, let me go back to the corrupt, corrupt church. Well, I'm, I won't read the corrupt church, but I will talk about um, visions that the Lord has given me of corrupt people in the body of Christ. There was a time when God had given me a vision of a, um, she was a, an evangelist. And God showed me, she and I were actually um, very friendly toward each other. We sat down, we had conversations, and I was praying to the Lord um, for her, and the Lord was showing me this woman's heart. And he was showing me that she was a wicked woman. And I had... It wasn't even a vision, to be honest with you. The spirit that was in her started manifesting while we were sitting down having lunch. I saw a cat come out of her forehead. And I looked and I said, I see you. And it laughed and it went right back into her head. Now, saints of God, this might sound crazy. But just hearing it, you know that that spirit not only popped out of her head. That means that, that spirit has her mind. And when you are demonized and the Spirit is letting me know that it has her mind. And when I try to let her know about the situation and, and talk to those, hallelujah, who were in charge over her. This became a 10 year ordeal of her wanting to get revenge. Because her, in her words, and this is how you know it's the devil. I'm trying to ruin her reputation. Saints of God, the woman needed deliverance. And she turned things around and said that I was trying to destroy her reputation. This is how you know it's the voice of the enemy. Because when someone's really truly in love with the Lord, and they know that someone is seeing something that isn't good, that's when they need to get before the Lord's face and say, Father, help me. But instead, the person spent years and years telling people, I'm just out to destroy her. I was out to destroy her reputation. And what was crazy is two years ago, and I say well past, it's been well past 10 years. Two years ago, I had a dream where God showed me she was going to come back into my life and pretend to be my friend and that she was actually having a whole um, thing to try to get revenge on me and the sad part about it is while she keep telling people I'm out to get her and destroy her God gave me a word to prophesy to her to stop her from entering into a business deal where she was about to get sabotaged and the people were going to embezzle and make her take the downfall but instead of still hearing the voice of God this woman was still wanting to come after me saints of God there are many people in the body of Christ with titles whose hearts are not with the Lord there was another case well I won't say I can't say wicked but maybe she, she wasn't with her first love but there was another case where a woman of God was praying um, on the prayer line. It was a telephone prayer line. And my body, I couldn't handle or stand her prayers. And I was like, well, God, this woman is praying very well. She sounds well-versed in, in scripture. And I could tell by her voice that she's been actually educated in um, um, ministry. And come to find out she did I think she had her BA in ministry she had her doctorates and, and she was um, she's been teaching for years and she came from a family that taught but yet and still when I was hearing her prayers I said Lord why can't I receive her prayers 
And the Lord said it's clanging cymbals. And the Lord was letting me know in his ear he couldn't stand her prayers because her heart was far from him. Her heart was not with him. Hallelujah. He said it was empty noise just hearing her prayers. Saints of God, hallelujah, we have to get to a place, hallelujah, where we're touching God's heart. Hallelujah. We cannot live a corrupt life. We cannot live a compromised life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to be in it. Hallelujah. All the way in. Hallelujah. We can't be tiptoeing around this thing. We cannot have our foot just uh, um, dipping in the pool. Hallelujah. God wants us to emerge in Him. These are the days we have to be emerged in the Holy Ghost, in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because just think, you spend years and years being prepared or, or doing all these good works for the Lord. And God said it's not worse. God, hallelujah, man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks on the heart. It doesn't matter how many degrees. It doesn't matter if they wear a long train and a white robe. It does not matter. They can know the whole Bible without ever looking at it and just be able to read every word verbatim. But if your heart isn't in it, saints of God. If your heart isn't with God, God, I can't imagine God saying, this is how he feels about this person's prayers. I, I can't imagine how God feels. It's like, it's like, you know how sometimes you have a conversation with somebody and you know that they're not being sincere and you know they're being fake. You know, you feel it in your heart. Some people say, oh, I feel it, you know, it's just in the, in the atmosphere, you know, it's, it's something about them, yeah, I'm not receiving it, you know, it's that kind of thing, when God's like, mm-mm, but the thing is, see, we are, we're just like going based off intuition of our, our feelings, this is God, it's like, I know, and I see what's in there, your heart isn't right, I know what's in your heart, I know what's in your mind, Jesus, now to the dead church. And to the angel of the church of Sardis writes, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be, wa be watchful and strengthen the thing which remains, that you are ready to die. <clears throat> Excuse me, saints. Excuse me. He said, Be watchful and strengthened the things which remain that are already that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before the Lord. Remember therefore how you received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore if you will not watch. I will come up to you like a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names. <coughs> Excuse me. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed with white garments, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches now he's calling it the dead church I have two visions of churches that I visit that the Lord showed me I'll talk about one church so I'm not sure I'll bring up the other church one church, I, I call it the dead church because, and the, and the thing that made it crazy is, God wanted to see that church blossom, but it was a dead church. 
in this church, God gave me a vision. And the vision was everyone that was in leadership were owls, but the owls were dead. They were all perched up in trees, but, and they looked alive. They looked like they were alive. But when I got closer, I'm like, their eyes look alive, but their body was lifeless. And in the vision, I asked my daughter, are they alive? And she looked at them and examined them, and she said no. And we both walked away. It was a dead church. Owls that were stuffed that looked alive. In the vision also, he showed me the congregation members. And all the congregation members were like crows. And some started to peck at me. And I know in that vision, God was letting me know that I would have been attacked because of the anointing over my life. But that's needless to say, is that God was saying that these people, they're dead. The pastor wasn't even listening to the voice of God although he had some prophetic gifts he still wasn't obeying the voice of God I mean all of us many of us have thought that we were wiser than God but there are many leaders who aren't even obeying the voice of the Lord the Lord is giving them instructions the Lord is giving them directions and they're not obeying saints this should not be so the dead church need to wake up there's some who may be in dead churches who are alive God said to um, there some of these people their garments are not defiled the other church I was at this church for three years and the Lord told me to leave but before he told me to leave he said, you will not grow here. And I didn't understand what the Lord was saying. I was already there for three years. But he showed me, I, in the vision, I was walking away and getting ready to walk out the door of the church. And he showed me the people all in aisles, in the pews everywhere, grabbing blankets and pillows and just laying down and it wasn't a laying down rest it was like they were asleep that's why I said you know I don't know if that would still be considered dead no he showed me they were asleep that they were comfortable that they liked where they are they weren't willing to grow they weren't willing to expand they weren't willing to go further than anything they just liked having everything very comfortable and very easy and God wanted them to do so much more and experience so much more but they I mean they really had dead works there and so God said you you won't grow here it's time for you to leave and yes I obeyed the voice of the Lord and left that place um, but this is just to say people who are doing that even individuals you're doing dead things if you're in the church, is doing dead things. We have to be alive in Christ. Hallelujah. We cannot do dead things. We are among the living. Hallelujah. Remember, we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So we're to live, hallelujah, among, we're to live before the Lord. Hallelujah. He came to give us life and that more abundantly. It's the enemy that came to kill, steal, and to destroy. Hallelujah. God did not bring us here to just be lots of days ago. He, he created the stars. If he made us like him, and he created within the seven day period, hallelujah, what do you think we're supposed to do? Well, the seventh day he rested, but he created in six days. We're supposed to be about our father's business. Okay, the faithful church. And the angel of Philadelphia write, the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens, I know your works, I see I have 
See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength. I, wait, you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to preserve, to persevere. You have kept my command to persevere. And I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world. Lord, the hour of trial to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. And I'm telling you, I believe the pestilence, the pestilence that we're experiencing now, and it's not even just that, because I think I remember telling you guys in prayer last week, or, or maybe this week, that I had a vision of the spirit of pestilence earlier this year around January. So the spirit of pestilence is upon this earth right now. I don't know what else is coming, but I did, God showed me. A vision of a cell so it, it's something else coming in whatever is here right now it doesn't look like the vision so I, I believe there's other things coming not that I want it to because we've been praying the pestilence that's here we've been praying those things away Jesus so um, he said because you kept my command to persevere I will keep you from the hour of trial which I which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth behold I am coming quickly hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown It's just as we were saying the wise virgins the wise virgins they held on the wise virgins held on to their oil they, they had to hold on to it until Jesus coming. And that's what we need to do. Hold fast to those who have your crown. Hold fast to your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of God and the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem which come down which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Those are the faithful people. Faithful. Hallelujah. Those who are faithful, stay faithful. You know, the enemy may want you to stop the enemy may want you to cave in and quit and give up. There are countless of times when, I'm not going to lie, I want to give up. But I keep pushing because I'm like, no, I will hold on to this thing until the end. Hallelujah. Our Father is faithful. He has done too much. It is no way I'm going to turn back. I have to constantly tell myself, you know, sometimes the flesh will want to win. No, flesh, you will not win this thing because I know my God. Hallelujah. We have to hold on to him for dear life. That's why we're praying and fasting. That's why we're fasting, say, because our flesh is not going to win. We're not giving up in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to be the faithful, consecrated, holy, living foot stumping, holy roller, all the crazy names people want to call us, that's what we going to be. You know, I've actually had someone tell me, and, and you know, she caught herself afterwards. Actually, she said God dealt with her. But, you know, this isn't like, I'm not mentioning names or, or even what church, just like the situations, though, just to give examples. But I remember... I was giving God praise. I was giving him the Halea praise. And I was jumping up and down. And hallelujah. Hey, glory, glory. You know. And you know. Sometimes I'm reserved. But sometimes I get real crazy. I be giving God some crazy praise. You're going to be like. Ooh. She's trying to jump out of her skin. And. 
one of the missionaries because I was going to a church with a lot of people who are refined. And so in her mind, I was doing too much. But it's like that that's because you're not you're not flowing in the Holy Ghost. Because if you saw that I was on fire, that fire should have jumped off on you. But because she was in her flesh, she was telling me you don't take all that and told me to sit down. And told me I'm going to basically embarrass myself and look bad in front of the other missionaries and, and other people who were, you know, important and had these um, high titles. And it was like, no, no, you were out of order. The praise belonged and the glory belonged to God. No one, if anyone is stopping you from praising God, they're being used by the enemy. And there are things, obviously, who could be used by the enemy. Because we've seen some things. I know all of you guys have seen some things in the body of Christ. If someone's trying to stop you from praising God, the enemy is using them. Because they don't know what you've been through. It does take all that for some people and more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because I'm not trying to be the lukewarm church either. <laughs> the lukewarm church. And in and to the angel of the Lord of the Ladacians write, These things says the, the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because I say, because you say, I am rich, I become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten therefore be zealous and repent that word zealous we all need to be zealous. Be zealous and repent, but be zealous in the things of God. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And that's to the lukewarm church. Hallelujah, 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 glory to God. And I believe that's all seven. We cover the lukewarm, the faithful church, the dead church. The loveless church, the persecuted church, the compromising church, and the corrupt church. Saints of God, may we all realize that when God is giving these warnings to the church, this is for each and every one of us individually. Everyone can read these scriptures today on your personal time, revelations chapter um, 2 um, I think that's all of chapter 2 wait, chapter 2 and chapter 3 okay so revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3 read on the seven churches you can read chapter 1 as well because it goes into you know God talking about these things but this is just to remind you saints of God we need to be with the mindset of being prepared for our father being prepared for his coming and getting our getting our hearts 
our minds, our souls, and spirits aligned with the Holy Ghost. Because without God, we can do nothing. We cannot live this walk, walk this walk, talk this walk. We can't do it without Him. And many people are trying to do it in their own strength. And God is saying every day we need to be relying on Him. So saints of God, let's get this right. Walk by the Spirit of God so that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Know that I love you. I want to see you win. I want to see you on the other side. I want us all when we're with Jesus to celebrate. Okay? You know, the Lord says He wished that none would perish. And the visions that I've seen billions and millions and billions of saints, not saints, but millions and billions of people um, entering into hell. And, and yes, some of them will be saints. Some of them will be people who did not obey God and, and was stubborn and, and, and prideful or, or didn't do something that God has told them to do. But I pray for better for all of us that we stay strong, that we hold on, that if we're the dead church, if any of us is dead inside, that we become alive. I speak now in the mighty name of Jesus, that these dead bones shall live in the name of Jesus. If there's any of us who are dead in Christ, who are, who are dead because our hearts are growing cold because of the world and, and things that we've come against, I speak life over each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are faithful, I pray for the faithful church, that those who are faithful, Lord God, will continue to be faithful, that they will never give up, never cave in, hallelujah, and that they will return to their first love in the mighty name of Jesus, and that they will stay faithful, hallelujah, and that they will act in tenacity in the name of Jesus, those who are lukewarm. Lord God, that they will be hot for Christ. Hallelujah. That they will be hitting the target. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. They will not be straddling the fence. They will not be here or there. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But they will be hitting the nail on the head with Jesus Christ. They will be doing everything that God has called them to do. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The loveless church. I decree and declare that the loveless church will behave more in love. That they will have the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That they exude love in the name of Jesus. Each and every one of us. The persecuted church that, like I prayed earlier, that they will stay strong in Christ. Hallelujah. That they will not give up, cave in, or quit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that the enemy will not be able to bully them out of their souls in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the compromising church. Those who are sleeping around and, and, and dibbling and dabbling in sin. Those dibbling and dabbling and, and corrupt, even practicing idolatry itself. Lord God, that they will turn around, that their hearts will change. That they will stop looking to the world. That they will stop listening to the world. That they will stop listening to the voice of Satan. Hallelujah. That they will consecrate themselves and live holy and fully unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Surrendering everything. Hallelujah. Dying to the flesh and surrendering everything to God. In the mighty name of Jesus. May none of us, hallelujah, hallelujah, be lost. Everyone under the sound of my voice. May none of us be lost. May all of us get it right with Jesus. May all of us, hallelujah, hallelujah, be prepared for the King's coming. May each and every one of us, hallelujah, give it all to God. Hallelujah, and die to the flesh. And no more of us, but all of Jesus. Jesus living in us. Jesus being strong in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when God sees us, he do not see us, but he see Jesus. Hallelujah. He see Jesus. He sees Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We have the mark. Hallelujah. Our name is in the book of life. May none of our names be blotted out in the name of Jesus. All of those who say, once saved, always saved. Hallelujah. God is saying, hallelujah, your name can be blotted out. But may that not be so for the God's kids and God's kingdom people in the mighty name of Jesus. May we stay faithful. May we stay humble. Hallelujah. May we surrender all in all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And may we not operate in pride. Hallelujah. But love, power, and the sound mind in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, glory, glory, glory. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray, saints, that we all get it right with Jesus because he has so many great things in store for us. Hallelujah. We are on the winning team. We are on the winning team. And what I love about God is he loves us so much. He'll even warn us before things happen. Hallelujah. To protect us because he wants us to win. He wants to see us win. God wants to see you win. So much so he's he's giving us the blueprint, the Bible, and then he's giving us instructions to get it right. Hallelujah. Even before he actually comes. That's a God who loves us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a God who loves us. That's a God who doesn't want to abandon you. He's not trying to abandon you. He's giving you a choice. And then he's laying it out. You have a choice. Hallelujah. You have a choice. You have a choice. Hallelujah. We, we just praise God for our soul salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. We love the Lord. Hallelujah. He loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, saints of God, hallelujah. If there's anyone who's listening who wants to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead on the third day. I turn away from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and to come into my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless everyone. Saints of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This was a blessed teaching on this afternoon. I pray that you are blessed on today and that you hallelujah have been strengthened and that you have decided you know what hallelujah maybe I have been um, not spending enough time with God hallelujah you know sometimes they say when you're beginning they say well spend 10 minutes spend 15 minutes then 30 minutes but some of you you've been doing that for 20 30 years okay some of you you need to be spending two hours in God's presence reading his word praying hallelujah and, and some more than that hallelujah it just keeps growing and growing you have to keep growing and wanting more developing more hallelujah in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah so may everyone have a great afternoon know that I love you God loves you more hallelujah in so much that he died on the cross for your sins Hallelujah. Just to save you. Hallelujah. He's the God that comes for the one sheep that is lost. Saints of God, let's be prepared for the King's coming. In Jesus' name, until next time, God bless everyone.